All right, we're going to talk about quadratic equations and quadratic functions. So if you remember, a quadratic equation is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a does not equal zero, and a, b, and c are real numbers. Okay, We're a function, if we put it in kind of function, that function notation, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a does not equal zero. So when we're solving these, we have a couple of different solving principles that we want to kind of work with. The first one is the zero product. So what that says is if a, a times b equals zero, we know something about a, b, or both of them, right? a is equal to zero, b is equal to zero, or a equals b equals zero. So here I have x plus two times x minus x plus one equals zero. So that tells me that x plus two equals zero. So x equals negative two, or x plus one equals zero, or x equals negative one, right? So my answer here would be negative two, negative one. The next one is square roots. So if I can isolate the square root, if I just have an x squared, I can take square roots. So if I have x squared equals k, then I have x equals plus or minus the square root of k. So here I have x squared equals 25. So I'm going to square root both sides and I get x equals plus or minus, because I'm taking the square root, 5. All right. If it was uh, x squared equals uh, 17, it would be plus or minus the square root of 17. So here we got a couple examples, all right? So the first thing here is on this first one, I see that I have an x squared and an x. I have a quadratic component, I have a linear component, and I have a constant. So I'm gonna, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this side equal to 0. So I'm going to go 2x squared minus x minus 3 equals 0. Uh, I'm going to factor that. So hopefully you remember how to factor. Um, so I'm really finding the factors here that will subtract to give me zero. So this becomes 2x minus 3, uh, x plus 1 equals zero. So what's going to make this zero is negative 1. Now this one's a little bit trickier. Remember it's opposite sign divide. So opposite sign of negative 3 is positive 3. Divide by 2 is 3 halves. So x is going to equal 3 halves or negative 1. Now this one, I don't have a linear component. So I just have the quadratic component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move everything to the other side. So I'm going to start by adding my 10 to the other side. Now I'm going to divide by 2, and I get x squared equals 5. Now I can square root both sides and get x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay, so there's my, my square root. Um, completing the square. So when we're completing the square, what we're really looking at doing is we're looking at getting something to be this. x uh, minus b over 2 quantity squared equals something. Okay, So we're really trying to get this to be in this form, this x minus some constant quantity squared. Okay? So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is set this equal to 0. Okay? I'm now going to move my constant over. Okay? If I had an a that is not 1, I need to get my x squared to be 1. So I would either have to multiply or divide everything by a to get this to be 1x squared. It is imperative that you make this 1x squared. Okay, So it's very, very important. Okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is I want to break this up into a square. Okay, So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go x minus 6 over 2. Okay, So I'm going to take this value here, I'm going to divide it by 2. Right? But notice that 6 over 2, which I know is 3, but I have this 6 over 2, and I have it squared. So on the left side, I have 6 over 2 quantity squared, so I have to add that to the other side also. Okay, So this gives me x minus 3 quantity squared equals 10 plus 9, which is 19. I now can simplify and solve this. So I'm going to erase this over here so I have a little bit more room. So I have x minus 3 quantity squared equals 19. I'm going to square root both sides. x minus 3 equals square root of 19. I don't know, so it's plus or minus the square root of 19. Add my 3 to both sides. 
x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 19. There's my two answers to this. So that's completing the square. What completing square does is it leads us to the quadratic formula. Okay? So the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay? So in our example here, our a was 1, but if I had a different a, I would divide everything by a, and then I had to divide it by 2. So this is that quadratic formula. Okay? Uh, completing the square always works. Uh, the quadratic formula always works because they go hand in hand. Uh, I use completing the square to find the quadratic formula. Um, if you don't remember that, we did that in Algebra 2 uh, to prove that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a quadratic formula to solve this. So now I have a is 3, b is 2, c is negative 7. So now I'm going to plug all this information in here. So I have negative b, so negative 2, plus or minus the square root of 2 squared, minus 4 times 3 times negative 7, all over 2 times 3. So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4, um, let's see, plus, what is that, uh, 2184 over 6, which gives me negative 2 plus 88, square root of 88 over 6. Now I'm not done because I have to kind of work down that 88, okay? So negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 22 over 6 times, which gives me negative 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 22 over 6. They all can be reduced by a 2. It's giving me 1, 1, so that gives me a 3. So my answer is going to be negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 22 all over 3. So that kind of allows you to kind of see how we use the quadratic formula, okay? Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and erase this so I don't crowd up my other information here. So we're going to talk just briefly about the discriminant. The discriminant is the piece inside the square root. So it's the negative b, I'm sorry, b squared minus 4ac. So if b squared minus 4ac equals 0, so if the inside of that square root equals 0, I have one real solution, okay? So um, it could, it'll be a double solution, but it could be a double solution, but um, what we're looking here is if that equals zero, I have one solution, okay? If it's greater than zero, I will have two real solutions. And if it's less than zero, I have two imaginary solutions, okay? So those are gonna end up being complex numbers, and the solutions are gonna be conjugates of each other. Okay, so imaginary solutions always come in complex pairs, okay, complex conjugate pairs. So the last thing we're going to talk about is applying quadratic principles to non-quadratic equations. So here I have the fourth power. So I have x to the fourth, x minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0. And I'm trying to find all the places where that's going to be 0. Well, I can use quadratic principles anytime I have a power, and then my middle power is half of the preceding power. So it doesn't matter. This could be x to the first. So if this was x minus 5x to the half plus 4, I can still use quadratic principles because I have my middle power is half of my, my lead power. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm still going to treat this almost like a quadratic, but now instead what I'm going to do is instead of factoring and getting an x, I'm going to factor and get an x squared. So this is factorable and do x squared minus 4, x squared minus 1. Now, I would look at each of these pieces. Is, is this factorable? Is this factorable? Well, the answer to this one is yes, this is factorable. Again, so this gives me x plus 2 times x minus 2. Is x squared minus 1 factorable? Yes. That's going to factor into x plus 1, x minus 1, equals 0. Now I'm just going to find what makes each of these 0. So that's negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, positive 1, and that's the values of x. Okay? 
Now, just a, a quick side note, because um, I was thinking about this. What if I had something like this? What if I had x squared minus 5 and x squared minus 1 equals 0? Well, we've already shown that this is factorable. But a lot of you are going to look at this and go, oh, that's not factorable. Well, kind of. Um, it's not factorable into nice integers. But this is factorable because notice here what I did is I kind of took the square root of this. I took the square root of 4 and got 2 and 2. So I could factor this into x plus the square root of 5 and x minus the square root of 5 and still factor it. Okay, so I wanted you to see that. So x is uh, equal to plus or minus the square root of 5 and plus or minus 1. Uh, so that's really utilizing quadratic formulas and understanding how to solve them.